there probably are questions being asked, but but it doesn't feel like that work is being done in the right place. It feels like <laughs> the work should be being done in the halls of power about this. Welcome to Impolite Company, the podcast in which we bring our black queer perspectives to some of the most interesting and pertinent DEI issues of the moment. I'm Ella, and like Kieran, I spent almost a decade navigating the corporate world, having to mask parts of my authentic self, and oftentimes feeling isolated and overburdened. Through conversations with each other, we discovered the transformative power of opening up, sharing, and building community. So join us every fortnight as we laugh, cry, and go deep on what topics are exciting us, as well as what's keeping us up at night. Hello and welcome back to Impolite Company. Today, in this episode, we're going to be talking about OBEs, specifically those awarded to people of colour. We're going to be talking about the origins of OBEs, the justification gymnastics that people of colour tend to go through when accepting them, whether it compromises your ability to speak out against the system itself by accepting an OBE, and also whether the calls to rename these awards would solve the branding problem they have. And lastly, we'll explore how we might react to being offered a most excellent order of the British Empire. Really, really interesting conversation. Enjoy. Oh, you got me a water. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we're recording. I was just <laughs> exclaiming that Kieran got me a water and that was very nice of him. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so today we're talking about Black OBEs and those types of awards. Yeah, honours. Uh, honours awards. I think it's always like a bit of a bone of contention. It has been for years because of what the OBEs represent. Mm -hmm. I think there's always been celebrities that are outspoken. And I thought it'd be really a good thing if someone in my family has been honoured one. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a really good thing to just discuss like what our views are on it. Because I think it is quite polarising. Yeah. And I think that there are people that make it work for them. And there are people that are just like, I'm not going to go anywhere near it. So I think, yes, first of all, kind of what's your feeling on these types of honours? And what, what do they mean to you? Or what do, you, yeah, what do, what do they represent for you? So, so I, we should probably make clear that we're specifically looking with the lens of the UK honour system, right? So like yeah. France has like the Légion d'honneur or whatever and and the UK has quite a specific honour system that is tied quite closely with the royal family and the monarchy. They're kind of conferred or, or, or given out by the monarch. And they're founded by, by them, right? So like the, yeah, the yeah. OBEs was founded by King George V. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. at the beginning of the twentieth century. Yeah. So there's 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 two things that it's that it's quite closely tied to, which I feel uncomfortable about. One is monarchy, the institution of monarchy. Yeah. I don't, I don't really have beef with the royal family. Mm. But but that institution and then the kind of second thing, which is an addendum to the first thing, is empire. Yeah. And in the British context, that's very specifically, I mean, the clue is in the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of these honours pretty much have empire in the title, yeah. member of the British Empire, order of the British Empire, commander of the British Empire, dame commander of the British Empire. So those are the two aspects that I find most difficult to get on board with. I would say that pre pre researching this episode, pre looking into it, pre reading mm. articles and things like that, I've probably felt more strongly than I do now. Or I should probably say, maybe I don't feel less strongly, but I feel my ire was was directed more at the people who accept them. Mm. And I think it's now more directed at the system. Okay. <laughs> the more I look at it, the more I get, the more I look as I as the more I look at anything, the more I get annoyed with systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah structure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what what in particular? Like, can you like? So I think so. You know, when we're looking at something like this with the lens, you know, when we've been talking about this episode, yeah, we've been talking about the lens of race most yes dominant 
you know, forefront of our mind. And the reason I think we've been talking about that is because empire for people of color in this country has such a visceral yeah. meaning and it has such a negative, painful legacy. Yeah. And, you know, even if you don't really know your history that much, everybody know you know, most people who are descendants of the Windrush generation, which you and I both are, know that we're descended from slaves, yeah. from enslaved people. And we know that we're, we have loads of pain and trauma in our family history, even if we don't know exactly what yeah. that family history looks like. Yeah. And then we also know that in the very immediate past, you know, our grandparents and even our parents have experienced loads of racism in this country, have been abused and used by this country. You know, empire is the reason they have a British passport, but at the same time, that was used to kind of get them to come and help rebuild the country. And they yeah. had to, they had to endure so much, you know, so there's all of this stuff wrapped up yeah. in it. And so when we're talking about black people accepting honors, I've always been quite staunchly, how the fuck could you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the more I've read about who, you know, the perspectives of people who've accepted them, the perspectives of people who haven't, the more I've gotten angry at a system that puts that decision on black people yeah. and refuses seemingly to self-reflect on it. Because I think what you do when you say to a black person, you know, would you like this damehood or would you like this OBE or, you know, you've been recommended for this thing from all of the kind of accounts I've read, what then ensues is almost like a kind of spiral of of this kind of dilemma of what am I supposed to do with this? And so what should be a really celebratory moment for people becomes this horrible dilemma that I'm going to be absolutely skewered if I accept it, but how can I not? And yeah. and. I've, that makes me angry. That makes me angry at the system because that's a dilemma that a load of other people who get offered an, o an OBE or an MBE don't have to grapple with. Yeah. You know, I'm sure Judy and Dench didn't have that yeah. <laughs> same. <laughs> yeah. Do you, think that do you think that people that accept the honours know that's how they're going to feel after the fact it's happened? I don't know, but I suspect they think that it's going to be more clear cut. It seems like to me that the people who have almost reluctantly accepted it, their perspective seems to be that they thought they would not accept it. Yeah. And then they ended up doing it. That's really interesting and something that I wanted to talk about because Lady Dynamite, Miss Dynamite, as she changed her name to, I thought that the, her reasoning behind it was like really, just, a, just a, it's a very personal but also knowing her brother being a Carla and his views on things like the empire. Yeah. And you know that like having read his book, kind of getting an understanding of their upbringing, I kind of respect their, just by, I respect their opinions. Right. And it's just really interesting to hear that, you know, she always was of the view of like, when she knew that people were collecting MBE and OBEs, like she would always question why would they do that? And she told herself that she'd never accept one. I mean, she kind of had these like long held deep, negative feelings towards the empire and the establishment and the suffering it caused exactly kind of what you've mentioned. And I think how, like you said, a lot of us who descend from Windrush generation and because we speak about it more, we have a better understanding of the, you know, generational trauma that's been passed down from lots of different messed up things in history. You know, she was of exactly the same kind of mindset, but then when offered it, she kind of went through this. She, you, you can tell that she really like thought deeply about it. And I think the point that she wrote an article for The Guardian is a really interesting thing to help people understand why she did it. And it wasn't because she wanted to be part of the establishment or that she stopped caring about like the messed up history. But it was more to kind of honour her grandparents and all the generations before. I don't know how I feel about that. And, he, and, he, and, and, and the reason why I say that, and she does mention this at the, at the end, she's like, I know people are not going like, to necessarily agree. But the thing that I, I like that she's done is she's made it very personal. She's made it about what, she what this feels, means to what me. What this means to me. 
the thing that I find hard to get over is that it still represents what it represents. Like, even if you change, even if you change it personally for yourself. But then is like, it like... It still represents what it represents. The thing that is occurring to me as we're talking about this is like, could you say the same about marriage, for instance? So I, I'm getting married sometime soon-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got queer friends who would never get married. Mm. Sorry, I've got friends full stop, actually. Yeah. Gay and straight who would never get married. And I have quite categorically said if I was in a relationship with a man I wouldn't get married yeah. because I feel deeply that you can't detach yourself from what that institution represents what, okay. yeah. and even with the best will in the world I have seen progressive straight friends get married and the way they get married and the gender roles and that it just they fall back straight they, into they, those it, it's hard to avoid falling roles. into yeah. into that and I feel free to get married in a way that I want to because I'm queer and because yeah. there's almost no precedent for what it means but there is there is still the question mark of like does that institution forever and always represent something mm deeply kind of patriarchal yeah can you make it your own or will it always represent that mm. it's a philosophical question yeah and i suppose it kind of there's a parallel yeah i'm trying to make yeah yeah no, no, i understand <laughs> what you're saying and i i wonder if some of that would have played out anyway if they didn't get married like your the friend the example of your progressive friends like if they'd just been in a long-term relationship or or, or are you saying that the the what marriage represents and the legal things behind it is all designed for you to not really follow a different path there's certain things that happen like even if it's like it starts to break down do do people fall into those gender stereotypes yeah. when and, and i suppose i'm also thinking about i i can't know what the what privately those friends relationships yeah. are really like behind yeah. closed doors but I, you know, you, you the wedding, just taking the wedding, yeah. and weddings are a whole thing, yeah. taking the weddings as an example, what, what feels like it happens is like, oh, it's a given that the woman will wear white yeah, and it's a given that the guy will be in a suit and it's a given that all of his bridal parts, not his groomsmen or whatever, will all be men and it's a given that hers will yeah. all be women and it, it just... So, and it's yeah. a given that the the father of the bride will give a speech, yeah. but the mother of the bride probably won't. There's just all of these things that just happen as part of the process. Yeah, because pe and people get married in a stately home, and they don't, they don't, you know, they just kind of do these things that are expected, and yeah. and and maybe it's what they want to do. I'm not like, yeah, but it it just feels like that's inevitable. It becomes yeah. this inevitability. Even if it doesn't represent like that would have. That for some people would really represent the way they live every day. Yes, like, I'm going out with the girls. Like, I'm, but it's I'm, so I'm doing that but it's voice. So nuts. That's a weird voice. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, I'm going out with the lads. <laughs> but not yeah. to say any stereotypes, but you know what I mean. Like, some people will live. It will be very aligned to the way that they live their life. And I think what you're saying is, but then you have actually, to, yeah, you've got people that don't live that way, and then for that one day, they suddenly fall into these stereotypes yeah. of like having all their like best, all of their yeah, all the ushers in their best. You have these non non religious progressive yeah. friends who are like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, of course I'm getting married in the local church, and yeah, you're like, yeah. what? Like just in, just in <laughs> case, just in case, like it does exist, and I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> yeah, because like, uh, that's what that's what you do. <laughs> so that's a sort of tenuous link, but I suppose my question is, can you ever decide what mm -hmm. something that is deeply tied to an institutional kind of precedent? means to you or yeah. is it always going to be tainted by that institution i think it depends on like for example what what miss dynamite is saying is that it's she wants to make sure that the things that happened to her grandparents and the generations before are not forgotten Hmm. It's like for me, it's a really big stretch. Like, but what does that mean? But so much bad shit happened because of the empire. I'm but not aren't sure you almost can, potentially kind of you're like, whitewashing it yeah. by, by 
it should be known as not a good thing so that we can never forget that it wasn't a good thing, not whitewashing it into, oh, like loads of black people and people of color from like ex colonies are now accepting it. So it's not a bad thing anymore. It's like, oh, hold on a second. Now we've over, like what you said, we've now whitewashed what actually happened. Let's do something else. Maybe it feels like it's, there's a part of my real strong kind of gut hatred of the honor system is that I would feel potentially co-opted by a system which wants to demonstrate that it's not evil yeah <laughs> and and diversify whilst maintaining its evil status quo <laughs> and and you know we we we've spoken in another episode at quite at length about kind of representation versus yeah. diversity and and i think that there's a parallel here as well because it's it's like do you want it <laughs> it's like do you want to make these kind of deeply corrupted institutions more racially diverse so that <laughs> do you want to be a part of rebranding them yeah it's almost like a branding exercise yeah, yeah. that i take issue with and and that that that's one aspect but then there's this other aspect which is which i would struggle with you know if i was ever faced with this dilemma which i'm not yeah. <laughs> currently is is there any reflection going on about this mm. because it's not like I'm I'm a believer that you can change institutions from the inside. Like yeah. I, like I can see why we have black women labor politicians who yeah. take issue with aspects of the labor party, yeah. take issue with the house of commons, yeah. take issue with our political system and still try and change it from the inside or still yeah. st still take part in it. One of the issues here is it doesn't feel like you have any ability to change it or that there's any desire to change it or that there's any self-reflection going on within that institution yeah. it feels like you're then kind of going you're being awarded this thing in order that you become part of it yeah. and then does that diminish your ability also to criticize it yeah what what do you so my my question there is like what are you becoming part of right because you like not in the like in the sense of It'd be different. So I think the thing that's different with politicians, and I completely agree with what you said, is like that's their job. They're doing it every day. They have opportunities every day. They're on the ground. They're speaking to people. They're, they're actually they actually have some some they have power to like do stuff. Right. I just think an award is an award. What other things as an OBE do you go to something that you can speak out and maybe gives you a little bit more of a platform. But like you, it, it it's an award from an institution rather than you being brought into an institution to do something. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not performing any kind of function, yeah. and also, I can see the allure of it. Yeah, I, I can understand because it is the most prestigious thing you can be awarded. Yeah, you know, if if you accept a damehood, for instance. Every time you go on a chat show, you are Dame Judy Dench. You are yeah. Dame Maggie Smith. Yeah. yeah. You know, you are who else is a Dame? Joan Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Dame Kelly Holmes. Mm. And then also, as you say, Dame Kelly Holmes, yeah. I think, ooh, Kelly Holmes yeah. is a dame. And I do like that she's a dame. Yeah. And I like that she's a black woman and she's a dame. Yeah. So I, I have complicated feelings about this. That's because <laughs> but I think that's because of the way that those awards have been that the history has been taken away from them quite deliberately so that we process it as a good thing and i think yeah. it's only when you start digging into like when you start really thinking about it like so for me it's only the last three or four years that i've really actually form out i know that sounds really bad that i've really started thinking about what they are and what they mean because there's never an association or anything talked about like there's, but then they're, they're obviously like quite deliberately not going to tell you the history of like OBEs, only the positive stuff. Like these are awarded to members of society that have shown, have had positive impact or shown a dedication to something for the greater well, do good. Do they have a, do they have, do OBEs have a specific history that is 
so, negative or is it just the association with empire? Have they always just been... So they were... So when they were founded, like OBEs in particular, founded by King George V in 1917 as a way to recognise the service of non-combatants during the First World War. Right. So it's to give an honour to somebody who was not on the battlefield yeah. in some way. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a particularly tainted history in terms of what they in terms of what they're about. It's but the it's, empire it's bit just, of it. It's just that presumably in nineteen seventeen anything given by the king had empire plastered all over it. Yeah. I think semantically. That's the <laughs> yeah, that's it's semantics, I think, a lot of it. Like it's the empire bit that people have problem with. And that's a bit like there've been campaigns to change it, right? To excellence. Which I still think doesn't well, yeah, what's your view on that? Yeah, now I'm like, actually, now that I've... Now <laughs> You're like, I'm like, changing my view. Yeah. Well, we. I think... So, like, I, if I, like, was to, like, take this away from what it is and say, like, if it was a work thing, we were talking about a rebrand, <laughs> just changing the meaning of an acronym, I don't think would fly because there's still an association that customers would have with those acronyms. You changing it, like, putting loads of money behind getting people to recognise that as a different acronym, you might as well just rebrand it completely. And I fit for me... Oh, so you're saying changing the name of it is not enough of a rebrand? I don't think. What would you do? And like you said, it's just, it's just removing some of, the, some of the history, not for all of them, but it's removing that empire part of it, which we should still have a conversation about. I would just have a different award that's not attached to any historical... But then do Bullshit. you think that it would be viewed differently? I don't think as it would. In, as the in, other do you one... think it would have less? There is, there is an undeniable weight yeah. to an OBE, to an MBE, to yeah. a damehood, to a yeah. knighthood, that I, I wonder if you mm. could replicate. Maybe you could. I think you could, because if the other ones don't exist, these are literally the new things. But then ha would you scrap... What do you do with all the existing dames? I think you give people the option to retain if they if they want to retain those titles, retain them, and they still have they mean what they mean. Or you can inherit whatever the new versions of those are. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. It's it, the question you you ask about language is interesting because I I sort of agree with you, but I also sort of don't. I think. Seman the semantic part of it is really powerful actually mm. I think words and symbols in this kind of context have a lot of meaning Yeah, symbols are kind of everything in a way in this kind of this zone of kind of honours and awards and recognition you yeah. know it's all really symbolic it doesn't yeah. actually have any tangible meaning it's purely symbolic yeah. and if I think if something's purely symbolic then the symbolism of it is central to it and therefore changing the wording of it would be massive. Yeah. But I still think to your point, you know, what do you do? Is it still, is it still something that the king reviews? <laughs> is it still something awarded by the king or, or somebody being deputized by, you know, there's all of these questions that tie it to, and, and part of the prestige of it, by the way, yeah. is that you go to Buckingham Palace with your mum and you get dressed yeah. up and you kneel yeah. and they put the sword yeah. on your shoulder, yeah. you know, and all of the have pomp, a problem with that, right? but all of yeah. the pomp and ceremony is yeah. part of oh, what yeah. gives it, weight yeah. to people so again do you do you detach it from that stuff i think yeah i don't know it's, and it's in which case right? in which like, case who awards it yeah and and so but what are we saying are we saying that the royal family this is a question not a view the royal family in themselves represent that empire part. So regardless of the leading question, <laughs> the leading the witness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to give two different <laughs> routes. Are we saying are we saying that they still rep very much represent the empire, and that is deeply problematic, and that's the structure that we actually have beef with rather than a name of an award. So regardless of whether you change it, as long as it exists within that system, it's still a problem. Or are we saying that the whole ceremony of it is part of the weight of the award and the pageantry and all that stuff? Are we saying that that is still okay and by changing 
the name that would hold up because the pageantry and all the other stuff is still there to hold it up as something that's important? Or are we saying everything needs to change? And this needs to, and it needs to be represent something completely different. It needs to be honoured for a different reason by different people. <laughs> Lots of different routes, you know. Not so leading, right? <laughs> right. Well, I don't know. I, I suppose my 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 challenge back in a way is: is it our job to come up with the solution? No. I think. <laughs> I think that part of what is difficult about all of this is that. It doesn't seem to me that any, or that there's very much, apart from people campaigning, like grassroots campaigners and people, some people who've already got honours are campaigning for the yeah. name to change. Yeah. Apart from that, it doesn't necessarily feel like much is being done to try and quiet, like, change it. Yeah. And I, I don't necessarily have a perfect solution, but I do take issue with the fact that it's on the people who get awarded this to have that moral dilemma as to what to do about it and that it doesn't feel like that so there probably are questions being asked but but it doesn't feel like that work is being done in the right place it feels like <laughs> the work should be being done in the halls of power about this and, and this is also linked, you know, the way that honours get awarded is an interesting thing because you have the king's birthday honours, or the, it used to be the queen's, and you have New Year honours, yeah. and then you also have prime minister's resignation honours, yeah. fun time. Yeah. And there's complexity there too because the prime minister's resignation honours which Tony Blair and Gordon Brown both refused, interestingly. Oh, really? Yeah, they didn't do them. They didn't do them. On their way out. Tony Blair and who? Gordon Brown? Gordon Brown. I didn't know that. But Liz Truss... Of course she did. <laughs> ...who was in office for 45 days... Good old Lizzie. <laughs> ...has resignation honours that she is putting forward... And were they executed? Yeah, I they think gonna... they were. I don't think Rishi Sunak could have... Could have um, what the hell? The incoming Prime Minister can block them, but he didn't. And also, part of Suellen Hoffman back into the government. Part of <laughs> we're not going to go down this route again. We're not. We're, we're not. not. not, we're not but I'm just saying, <laughs> like we we can't. We, you know, I'm not surprised. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Oh yeah. <laughs> and part of the resignation honours is, you know, knighthoods and and things like that. But it's also peerages. So like seats in the House of Lords, as far as I Which gives you can tell, actual real power. Which gives you actual real power. So that's not just a symbolic award thing. And so that linkage, I think that kind of thing taints the whole system. Yeah. That linkage with the cronyism of, you know, you know, Boris Johnson put that that thirty year old woman in the House of Lords. Mm -hmm. No one can figure out why. <laughs> there was a speculation yeah. that she was his daughter. It's either she's she's his daughter or he's been stopping her. It's one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows why this woman is in the House of Lords. You know, it all of that yeah. I think taints the whole Completely. system. And then it's like, can you in good conscience just go to the palace, accept your awards, say this is what it means to me this is what and I mean. detach yourself from that? Yeah. So so Kwame, what's his name? Kwame Kwe Ama, he's an actor. He got an OBE. And again, very similar to Lady Dynamite, Miss Dynamite. He really talked about the history and his mother coming from a colonized island where the pecking order put people of his complexion at the bottom and that his mum had travelled like 4,000 miles in order to give her child a first world education and the benefits of the first world. And now... Has he put it as first world, by the way? I'm just saying yeah, that. Yeah, that's what he put in this interview. First world's not how I would mm, yeah. word it. So, so now that one of her children could be endowed with something that is perceived as having great value, I'm pleased from my mother. And he was like, you know, he was conflicted. So, so he was asked, like, was you conflicted? He's like, of course I was. And he's like, has lots of respect for everyone who's refused it, including Scottish white people. I don't know why he's very specific about that. So he has the utmost respect for the people that have refused it. But he chose to make the decision particularly 
at the time to, I think, recognize again the experience that his mother had had. So very similar kind of reasoning to Miss Dynamite. People but then, saying they're doing it for their elders. Yeah, basically. exactly. And I just think, I just think when you when you put that against which i completely like respect that way of looking at it but then when you've got people that are just being given it for nothing or what appears to be nothing it's not i don't perceive it as having a great value but do people genuinely perceive it as having great value and does it actually have great value when it's just being I used in of, a completely different way i kind of can see the value of it i kind of can, it's like it's and both, I think. Some yeah. people are clearly sirs because they grew up in a certain class and yeah. they have always been in and it's around Westminster and it's yeah. always been part of their trajectory. And I think that's kind of meaningless. Yeah. And at the same time, I do think Miss Dynamite having an OBE or an MBE, I'm not sure which one she's yeah. got, is kind of meaningful that's that's my that's mm. my difficult tussle with yeah. this because she's not i know that she's not gotten that because she's been doing some backdoor dealings yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you know lobbying in the gentlemen's <laughs> clubs of of, of, of westminster of, of, yeah. yeah so so i wonder if you can there's there's a few things i think i wonder if you can separate the types almost there's mm -hmm. like the resignation honors which are bollocks <laughs> then there's then there's the the honors for i suppose public figures yeah famous people basically then there's honors for people who are like civil servants and i i wonder if you if there should be some separation if, if you should I kind of separate them in my mind i don't okay. necessarily mean there should be official separation okay. but if you should assess them differently in a way i could sort of see how if you were the head of a charity or you had done amazing work in the nhs and you were awarded an obe or an mbe that you would accept it there's something i can see there about the recognition of something that you've done for the country or that being a recognition of your organization yeah. that is meaningful that you might think twice about about refusing is that because there's nothing else partly but i also think i could see how you i could see the logic of seeing it as being about more than you yeah whereas if you're a sports star it's purely about you is it always though i don't know if that's fair well it's about you in the sense that it's about your individual achievement it's not okay. about your it might have meaning beyond you but it's yeah. but it's you know marcus rashford gets an mbe but that was after he'd done all the stuff during lockdown. And, no, no, no. Like, no yeah. I'm not saying it's about yeah, him in yeah. the sense that it's that it's not about meaningful work. I just yeah. mean it's it's awarded to him in a very individual right. way. Whereas if you were if you were leading an institution, yeah. I can see how you might see it as the institution's award and not just okay. your award. Both have meaning. I think it's interesting. I've never really. F I think it's always deeply personal. Like I think it's always about the person. I don't think. But they'll talk about like. It will be talked about what they've done. It's always about what they've done, like their mm. contribution to different areas. Mm. But I always think that it's very much the focus is on that person being an anomaly. It is, yeah. but I could see how if, let's say, I got a, I was leading a, I don't know, like the the person who who founded the Runnymede Trust has yeah. their knighthood. Yeah. Let's say that's I was that guy. Yeah. I could see how in that scenario, when I get that letter, I might be having some conversations with my team. Yeah. Right? I might be saying, I've got this and I feel really conflicted about it. But this is a thing that is significant for the Running Me Trust. It's obviously deeply personal and it's also I'm known in relation to my to my relationship to this institution. Mm -hmm. And I, I would, I would, my, I know that my reaction would be to have lots of conversations with yeah, people yeah. in my team about it. I would. Whereas I if would I was just like, I'd say, I, I don't, I, no, no, I don't no. really have a position. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying that yeah. that's one. Whereas if I was D Kelly Holmes, yeah. 
I just represent me, Kelly Holmes. So I'd probably be having some conversations, but they'd be with my family yeah. and maybe with my friends. I see what you mean. I'm not representing a company or an organization or a team. I'm, I'm, mm. it, I do think it's different. Do you not think that she would see it as I'm representing like sports, women in sports, like, even, like, like she would maybe see it, but they, I know what you mean. It's symbolically, like a, symbolically, yeah. Symbolically, but it's not a specific institution. But not tangibly. Issues. Yeah, yeah. You know. The awards for for black professionals. I'm more interested in those kind of things. I think they are a more targeted celebration, and or seeing people in not just awards that specifically for a specific group of people, but are being recognised in those kind of. I mean, there's a whole other conversation around that because there's still structures that they'd have to that they're operating within, right? But I think that is also for me really important, mm. and people seeing you in those spaces is more important than like these awards that you get from the, like the Royal family. Well, can I play you a, a little bit of a clip of something? This is actually a really good video. We can put it in the episode notes, but do you remember when the race report came out? Yeah. The, the race report that said that, that racism isn't a doesn't thing exist. in Britain and it doesn't exist. Institution of racism isn't a thing. Yeah. Ash Sarker, who is a journalist did a YouTube video called This Is England, Ash Sarkar's Alternative Race Report, which is really good. It's only 10 minutes long. And as she says this in it, which I think is apt. Some pretty good ingredients to work with if you want a people-powered mm. movement. The problem with liberal identity politics is that it puts recognition from the state above self-organisation and above collective struggle and above solidarity. So if we want those ingredients to mean anything, in some ways we've got to divest ourselves of the desire to be recognised by those at the top and start recognising each other. I agree. And then <laughs> she's just, that's what I meant. <laughs> like, I'm more interested in that than like somebody with power in that way, like just going or people in power or structure going, yeah, we recognize that what you've done is very good. I'd rather be recognized by my community or who it's impacting or. And does accepting recognition from the top reinforce the idea that this kind of hierarchy is a valid structure? So can you be David Osoga criticizing empire, criticizing the systemic forces in society and that, that kind of hold power in certain groups, in certain, you know, whatever, the class system, yeah. you know, the patriarchy, white supremacy, and at the same time, accept an honour which comes from within that system and and arguably reinforces that structure. I don't think they're compatible. Yeah. Like I don't think I, I don't I don't think you can. I, I don't think you can. I think it's I think it's and I think it's a long shot. Like it's it involves a lot of gymnastics that are never good enough. Like in terms of like justification gymnastics. Yeah. Like it's and that's what it and, and unfortunately that's just what it looks like when you read the reasoning of why people accept it. It just looks like justification gymnastics. Mm. Well, also, you know, he <laughs> we're really going in on him. <laughs> but he says, he has said, you know, s stuff about the, the, the diversity problem that, that yeah. the honour system has. And my response to that is almost, but isn't it always going to have a diversity problem given what it represents? Like surely the way to solve the diversity problem is not to make more black people have to grapple with having empire in their name yeah, <laughs> and to address the fact that you're asking that question in the first place. Yeah. Like address the fact that you're put. So the, the yeah. thing I said at the beginning of getting annoyed at the system is, I'm annoyed that every time a black person or person of colour, it isn't necessarily even just that, it's people who are politically conscious in that way, mm. ha get given one of the highest honours that they can be given, that actually, rather than being a joyful thing, they are faced with a horrible dilemma. Yeah. I think that sucks and I think we shouldn't be putting them in that position. No, I don't think it's, I, I completely agree and I think it takes away from the good stuff they're being awarded for, right? Like it, it kind of takes it away 
we're having a conversation about it. I don't, I'm not taking away from what these people have achieved. And it's exceptional a lot of the time what they have achieved. Mm -hmm. And it's unfair, exactly like you said, that they have to not only have to, to grapple with like the the reasoning behind accepting it, having to make a justification. And then also it somewhat for some people will overshadow the good contributions that they've had to society. And for me, for all those three reasons, I think it needs to go and be changed. <laughs> yeah. Done. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just think it's not, I don't want to like, yeah, I just don't think it's fair. I completely agree with what you said. And I don't know if you can get away with that. If it is, called what it's called because it represents what it represents there's no way around it in my eyes yeah yeah so i don't know if you know quajo who's a a social issue campaigner he talks about he, he 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 talks a lot about housing and he advocates for people in social housing and people in do you know who i'm talking about yeah 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 he was offered an mbe earlier this year i think And I thought his statement was fantastic. And I, I just see that. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll read his statement yeah. to you. I want to start by thanking whoever choose to, chose to nominate me, as I have no doubt it came from a good place. So much grief and suffering has happened as a result of the poor state of housing in the UK, with the vulnerable and poorest most ignored, some living in what can only be described as slum conditions. On the 14th of June 2017, 72 innocent men, women and children tragically and prematurely lost their lives in Grenfell Tower through no fault of their own, a disaster that should never have happened. Since then, campaign groups like Grenfell United, Shelter and many others have stood side by side demanding systemic change. Whilst brave tenants have shared their own experiences, In order to highlight the sheer lack of progress and accountability since Grenfell, many continue to suffer. Therefore, I cannot accept being honoured or receiving a title off the back of an issue which realistically should never have existed. Mm -hmm. And in saying that, I felt compelled to turn it down. I've written to the Prince and Princess of Wales to inform them of my decision and to express my interest in collaborating with them to raise awareness surrounding the social issues causing causing needless suffering to minority groups across the UK. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the Prince of Wales' recent work surrounding homelessness. It can only be positive to see meaningful change across lots of other social issues whilst giving a platform and an ear and and a hand to those most ignored and neglected thanks to all who continue to support and the reason i thought this was a really good statement was the acknowledgement of the fact that he's almost saying the reason i'm famous yeah. is because this issue is so awful yeah. because i'm highlighting such an awful issue and i feel sorry I, i'm paraphrasing now but the way i kind of read it was I I almost I feel uncomfortable taking credit or taking an honor for something that I shouldn't be famous for. You know, if it, if it, if it wasn't broken, yeah. you wouldn't know who I am. Yeah. And so I think that also speaks to this question that I've got in my mind of you know the reason you have the honor and yeah. and is there something is there a dilemma it potentially creates if you're a person who's a a social campaigner, an anti-racist campaigner, a if you're famous in some way or you're well known for your work around a certain issue, does accepting the honour get complicated morally because of the fact that that's kind of the you know, that's kind of the reason you're fa- it's not like you're Ian Wright. And you're famous for being a footballer. Yeah, but going back to the quote before, the reason is because of who's awarding it. They're part of the problem, right? If the community were awarding you it, would it be a problem? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I think it goes back to, like, who's awarding it. Like, I think if the community were like, you have been, like, I'm sure he would have accepted it if it was from... Grenville United. Yeah, exactly. Were yeah. Awarding him a or awarding it or like a or like a group of 
I don't know. Yeah, it would. It would be. I think. I feel like it would be. I don't want to speak on his behalf, but I think it's because of who's awarding it are part of the problem. They, they could have done something before. They chose not to. Someone has gone out of their way to basically to basically expose what's happening, and then the person that was responsible for it is going, "Well done. Here's an award." I'm really oversimplifying it, but it's. The, but I don't you know, know if the Prince of Wales is directly. No, 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 but I mean, like, but there's like there's the, other thing, like, yeah. is part of that institution, right? Part or of, that the system, inst- yeah. of the system and what it represents. And I think that's where the problem lies, right? The royal family are still have some, maybe they don't, but they have some responsibility for their subjects. <laughs> Subject. So even. what the hell? Yeah. Like, so what the hell? Like, why are you awarding? Like, do you know what I mean? And I, not that I agree with that statement, but that's kind of what the royal family kind of is about. They're meant to care for their empire, which we know they don't fucking do. But, but at the same time, it's kind of just wild the idea of being awarded that for those specific reasons. I think you're completely right, and I I completely agree with with him that. Mm. And, but also, I think going back to the question before, that's how about like, is there an option to not accept it and it still be recognised? That's how you do it. You just make a statement about it. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. And then continue to do your work. I've spoke. I've reached out to the prince and princess of Wales about how we can collaborate. Yeah, so like, you're still at, you're still operating at that level of excellence as expected. Okay. Final question. Yeah. If you were, if you received that letter in the post and you kind of were grappling with the question, yeah. how would your, how would your grandma feel? How would your elders feel? Cause that's the big, that's Seems the big argument, that, yeah. you know, how would your, your elders and your ancestors feel? Do you think? My nanny passed away, <clears throat> who was English, inherently was, was fairly patriotic because that was just kind of she lived through the war and it was there was a lot of stuff going on then right of people at that time in the UK I think she'd be really proud that I'd been kind of put forward for it but I think if I had a conversation with her about why I wouldn't accept it which I wouldn't same probably with my mum I think they would completely understand or I know they would completely support me whether they understood it or not they would always support me so I don't think I would have pressure from my family to accept it. Mm. But I think that I would also make sure that I make that recognition work for me in the ways that I want it to. So I would say no, but I would probably, I would speak about it and the reasons why I, I would want it to shine a light on still the things that I'm being recognised for and make it work for me, but I don't, wouldn't accept it. But I think my family wouldn't be, there would be no pressure from my family. They would still know that I've been recognised for it. And that's all that I think would matter. And they probably would know the work I'm doing anyway. So it wouldn't be like, I feel like a lot of people around those people know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. I just don't think it would be a pressure. I think I would be allowed to make my own choice and my own mind up about it. And I'd be sort of, unless it was like reckless. Which it would, I don't think it could be in this circumstance. My family are always going to support my feelings, right? And I'll, and I'll always have a conversation. Mm. And even if my nan said, do it for me, I'd be like, I mean, it's a bit different. My nan's white. So that would be, I think that would be quite weird for me to say I'm doing it for my nan. Mm. Even though she, her life was impacted by Windrush, her husband was black. I think that would be a wild reason. Like that would be some mm. gymnastics of reasoning. And I think she would get that. She mm. would have got that. I don't think it would be a big deal. Mm. What about you? I don't know. I've actually got one and never told you. You imagine uh, how? <laughs> Surprise. I don't know. <laughs> my my grandma is the person that I'd be interested in her opinion. Mm. And she has a complicated relationship with I think she'd want me to accept it, I think. Really? Interesting. I don't know fully. She's got that generational respect for that authority. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily align with her on, mm. but I kind of understand. Because that's how you had to that's what you she, had to do to survive. She's proud to be British. Yeah. 
in a way that I get sometimes baffled by because I'm like, this country has been shit to you. <laughs> you know, you worked hard all of your life in like women's shelters and stuff and all you've experienced, not all you've experienced, but you've experienced a lot of just yeah. racism. And she still like supports Britain in the athletics over Jamaica. And mm. when I ask her if she'd go back to Jamaica, she's like, she she thinks I'm mad. Like, you know, but, there's, but she, there's a kind of yeah. pride in her Britishness yeah. And she's always had a British passport. She's and she's she's been frank with me about her experiences. She yeah. doesn't she doesn't sugarcoat it. Yeah. But I do wonder if that that happened one day and she could come with me to the palace or whatever. I don't know. I think she'd want me to accept it. Whether that means I would, mm. but I I I I could be wrong. But she's not a radical. So I think it would, I, I understand the grappling people do. Mm. I just think you're right. I can't, I, if I'm being honest, I can't find a moral justification for it. But I think if I, if I, if I went down the familial route, I think that that's what she would I feel say. like we're a very different, we're very different to our grandparents in terms of our broader understanding of what's going on. And that's not to say that they don't have an understanding of what's going on, but we are we've been empowered to really think differently mm -hmm. and not have so there's not been as much of a need to just put your head down shut up and get on which means that we we've 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 we think i think a slightly different way and we don't not, have the respectability politics yeah, and, there's no, there's, and there's not as much propaganda like mm. that's that was directed like at like everyone at that time, a fool or in history, like there's mm. not as much propaganda around it, and we're not as much in survival mode all the time. Yeah, like they were in survival mode all the time. Yeah, so we have the capacity, and also there because they laid the groundwork. Yeah, we're benefiting from that. Something like an OBE or an MBE would be unimaginable to them. Mm -hmm. So I do think there's something kind of monumental about it yeah to someone like my grandma yeah that maybe i wouldn't feel in the same way yeah it's from a different time it did mean something it was so but far it's, away it's not from, just that it's fr yeah, yeah it was just so unreachable unreachable it was unobtainable so you could, in the 60s she couldn't imagine yeah. so i think there is something about that of like yeah. it would symbolize I'm putting words in her mouth. She might be like, "Fuck it." Don't. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I think like, it would. I, love what you're about. <laughs> I think it would symbolize something monumental to her. I think it would. I think it would symbolize. It would symbolize some the amount of change. Yeah, because it was so unobtainable. It's a signal that things have changed, but actually, we've. I think they've changed in different ways, but much more rapidly than they were at the time. So like we've comprehended that things have changed. We understand, we we get it. We also don't have lived perspective of how bad it was back then and how unobtainable that would have felt. And maybe maybe <laughs> yeah, so we that so I think there's just like it, it, different worlds, right? Yeah. And I think that that we the the the, the amazing thing I think that would that I think I would we see now as far as like we just have that respect for each other's worlds. Like, I don't think my nan would be wrong for un for like perceiving that as an amazing honor. Mm -hmm. And even my granddad, who's black, like I wouldn't put them down for it because they're from they're from a different world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've lived mm -hmm. the lived world they come from is very different. But I think they would also respect that I have benefited from all them being in that world and that 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 my world is different. Yeah, and we still the, the, it's still not good enough. <laughs> that's it, folks. <laughs> that's yeah. that's that on that. <laughs> Don't accept a fucking yeah. honor, okay? Do what we've, you want. We've 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 talked around it. We've thought it through, and our opinion on it has not changed. We've done the gymnastics, <laughs> and then it's not gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. No, we need them to. I think it's clear, kind of how we would process if that was to ever happen in the future. Not saying that it would, how we would feel about it. And be interesting to see what people think. Thank you for listening to this episode of Impolite Company. 
check out the show notes for a summary as well as any important links. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe to our show and share it far and wide with anyone you think will benefit. And if you'd like to connect with us directly, we're on LinkedIn as Kieran Scott Woodhouse and Ella McCann-Tomlin. We'll be back soon.